The Bionic Cobot, the Bionic Cobot is, the is the first pneumatic 7-axis robot which is created very much like the human arm in terms of its construction. It's designed especially for working together with people in human-machine collaboration. That means that man and machine share a workplace and work together on the same workpiece. The pneumatic design comes with several benefits. Here you see a very simple joint, the elbow joint of this robot. And, as you can see, there's a rotary vane inside it here, and this can be rotated using compressed air. So, we've got no complex servo motors, gears, zero backlash gears, no big poles, but actually a very simple construction of low complexity. That means, like the antagonist and agonist principle in a human arm, we can make the forces act together or against each other, so that we can infinitely adjust the rigidity, power and precision. We've repeatedly discussed this design concept together in the team. Sebastian Schroff, our industrial designer, has now put it into practice in the construction. When we started tackling the layout and design, we noticed straight away on the first prototype that the hose and cable routing is the biggest problem, because we have to route two hoses and one cable for each of the seven actuators. That means we end up with 16 hoses. And of course, we also based our work somewhat on the human role model, our own arm because the muscles, bone and all our veins and nerve cords are rooted here in such a way that they don't restrict our movement at all. Due to the experience gained in our clay models, we decided to install the hoses outside in the upper joints, covered by plastic caps. In the lower joints, we route the compressed air through the shafts through interior bushings. If you want to develop a robot these days, you also have to invest an awful lot in software, of course. For this, we have a team of three people who essentially dealt with software over the last year. On the one hand, the interface to the human, the user interface was developed. Secondly, there is a robotic server. This is where the whole mathematics, the actual robotics takes place. And thirdly, there's the so-called control technology, which allows the kinematics to then actually move accordingly too. Naturally, it was important to us that the robot is as simple and intuitive as possible to operate. This means that in the human-machine collaboration, the worker should also be able to program or modify a sequence themselves. That's why this user interface, the interface between the robot and human, is a very important part of our development work. And Nadine Kersher, our computer scientist, has addressed the question of how the robot can be taught a certain sequence as simply and intuitively as possible. In terms of the user interface, from the very beginning it was extremely important to us to develop a simple and intuitive operating concept. We wanted to use simple meaningful icons that guide the user in their clicking sequence. In principle, the structure of the program resembles a video editing program. On the top part, we have icons that are supposed to symbolize the robot's actions. For example, saving a point, making a movement or opening and closing the gripper. And these icons can be pulled by drag and drop into a sequencer track at the bottom part of the software and arranged there one after the other in sequence. Another feature is the visualization. All movements are also reflected here and the user has the option of showing the movements and sequences that they have programmed in the visualization system. The user can make fine adjustments to the robot using a directional pad. For bigger changes in the movement, they can use the hand-guided mode and move the robot directly by hand. If programs and program sequences get more complex, it's necessary to group these logically. The user can use groups here and allocate individual actions to these groups. Once the user is satisfied with their program, they can press the play button and let the program run through. The software then generates a Python script which is interpreted by the robotic server. Whilst we use our own design and development for the user interface, when it comes to the robotic part, we rely on ROS, an open source platform. Mr. Mertijk will now show us what it can do with path planning and inverse kinematics. 
Once the user has programmed a program in the user interface, the program must be interpreted so that the robot can also execute it. To do this, we use ROS, the Robot Operating System. This operating system needs a kinematic description of the robot, however, in order to make the transformation. We created this kinematic model using our CAD data and transferred it to ROS. ROS can use this kinematic model to calculate the articulation values. This was then forwarded to the Festo Motion Terminal, which then also regulates the corresponding articulation values. Our robot has a small circuit board fitted in each joint, which reads out two pressure sensors under the coder. These are sent via the CAN bus and read back into ROS, where the data is processed. Once the paths are calculated and the trajectories planned in the ROS, these now need to be implemented in the robot. And for this purpose, we hand over all the coordinates to Christian Trapp, our control engineer, who, together with Alexander Hildebrand from our research department, then has the job of controlling the air currents and pressures so precisely that the kinematics ultimately move flexibly and softly. It's the task of the control technology to follow the specified trajectories precisely and elegantly. On both the bionic robot and our old functional models, for this purpose, we use two key elements to generate the movement. On the one hand, that is the highly integrated valve from the Festo motion terminal. And secondly, we use the semi-rotary drives from the Festo product range. In all cases, we're always softer with pneumatic drives than with any other drive concept. The air itself is compressible, which means it acts like a spring, and we can use the pressure level to influence the spring stiffness. That means, with a low pressure level, we're very soft and elastic, whilst we become very rigid with a high pressure level. The system is therefore inherently soft, even in the event of a collision, thus reducing the danger. With this highly complex system, we have now also managed to achieve a high position accuracy of one millimeter by means of a servo pneumatic solution. The Bionic Cobot is already a future concept today that we now also want to present to the public after the development period in this small but interdisciplinary team. We see a lot of potential in it and we want to discuss this potential with our customers, with the community, the robotic community and we want to see where the potential is in the future.